Mm. Okay, so there are four main secrets in an essay writing. So when you open the question paper on the test day, please don't ignore any of these sites. I mean, topic and questions both are really important. Some candidates, uh, after looking at the topic, uh, start writing without caring about the question, which might affect their scores negatively. I make a sure. So this is why both of them are really important. And uh, also one of the main secrets in an essay writing process is ideas. Ideas should be clear on topic and detailed. Okay, so this is really important. So if we look at uh, at this uh, side from different perspective, candidates can lose their schools when their ideas are not clear or off topic or maybe not detailed. So uh, this is why we should try to explain our ideas as much as possible, but staying on the topic. And finally, uh, grammar and vocabulary in terms of language uh, are the backbone of writing process, of course. Uh, and final, last main secret, proofreading checking. So this is not typical for many candidates. So either they can't manage their time, timing, this is why they fail to check uh, in, in the last two or three minutes. But if you uh, arrange your, if you plan your writing process before writing, I mean, uh, if you spend seven, eight minutes on planning, then you are going to be uh, complete your essay, full essay, over 30 minutes. And finally, you will have a few minutes for checking, which is an effective method of planning and writing a process in 40 minutes. Well, and now it's time to look at the criteria. Well, I will say that criteria are examiner's eyes. So sometimes candidates come up with complaints saying that, oh, my paper uh, has been checked and marked unfairly because many candidates are unaware of criteria. The first criterion is called task response. TR, which is going to give you uh, 25%. So TR means you have to have a clear position in the writing process. So it means, for instance, if you, in the introduction say that I agree, but in conclusions you change your mind saying that I disagree, of course, it's going to be unclear position. Well, well explained ideas, for instance, if, it, if you claim that uh, washing machine is time saving, then you have to explain it, how it saves time. Okay. And finally, stay on the topic. For instance, if you're talking about um, washing machine, then don't change it to refrigerator. Okay. So try to keep uh, on going, talking about uh, washing machine, explain, and, and then move on to another idea. So is it clear about task response? Yes, Mr. Jehan, it's clear. Great. Now, CC is uh, coherence and cohesion, uh, which means logical and grammatical connection uh, throughout your paper. So grammatical connection, I do believe that is clear uh, because if grammatically sentences are not connected, then the sense might be damaged 100%. Um, but logical disconnection happens even unintentionally. Sometimes candidates uh, ignore logical disconnection and they don't know they, where they made this mistake. Um, as I said earlier, if you're talking about a uh, washing machine, but you explain the efficiency of refrigerators, <laughs> it is break of um, logical connection okay um, and um, and finally uh, lexical resources and grammatical range and accuracy 
of course, this is language, uh, language focus that we have to improve it over the time. But you know, let me say something about lexical resources. Uh, here I put uncommon vocabulary. Uh, sometimes candidates say, "Teacher, I write great words and phrases, but I still don't know why my vocabulary is not strong." Of course. Uh, un un uncommon vocabulary, for instance, don't say always negative effect, negative effect, but sometimes change it to, for instance, dire consequence or deleterious impact or detrimental effect, okay, like this. So these words and phrases are uncommon vocabulary. But even if you have good uncommon vocabulary, but please use um, correct word choices because if you use uncommon vocabulary which is not appropriate for the sense or the content then it is nonsense it is useless okay so uh, appropriate uncommon vocabulary um, and few and no mistakes yes if you um, if you're looking at uh, good scores or high scores then you have to make either few mistakes or no mistakes at all. And finally, grammatical range and accuracy. So I just say, to, to make it clear, I put here CAE or CPE. This is Cambridge Advanced English and Cambridge Proficiency, Proficient English. So these two levels of English uh, would provide a candidate with a great grammatical range. But accuracy is really important because, for instance, if you use if second, if you want to use if second conditional, however, you make mistakes in the parts of this structure, then accuracy is not going to be there. Okay, so whatever you write, try to write correctly. Now we are going to <coughs> types of essays. But, dear candidates, have you got any questions before looking at uh, the types of essays? No, still, uh, till here everything is clear. I don't have any question. And at the end of the lesson, I'm going to email uh, this presentation that you can uh, go through the slides again and again. Okay. All right. Well, um, you know, essays, I mean, learning types of essays is as essential as um, increasing vocabulary and grammar because, uh, I mean, making a mistake in essay types or misunderstanding the essay types is going to cut your score definitely. So this is why I put categories here. The first category is, is called opinion essays. So. This category says that you have to come up with your own ideas or own opinions. You shouldn't say what people believe. You should say what I believe in my opinion. Okay, so there are three questions here, agree or disagree. What is your opinion? positive or negative development. If you see any of these questions on the test day, then I should remember it is an opinion essay and I have to come up with my own ideas in body parts, even in, in introduction and conclusion as well. Okay, well, and never and ever write a new body part for what people believe, what people, I mean, for people's views. Yes, you can say something contrasting. For instance, although some people oppose this view, saying that, da, 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 but I believe, okay, so you can say something like that. Also, people say something, but you have to complete that idea by coming up with your own views, okay? However, again, I'm, uh, I'm saying again, don't write a new paragraph for what people believe only your own views. Agree or disagree, what is your opinion and positive or negative development? 
actually positive or negative development, positive and negative development. So there are two types of there are two different types of questions in uh, in IELTS essay writing. One is positive or negative, another is positive and negative. If you say positive or negative, it is opinion category. But if you say positive and negative, it is discussion. So it means, so if you say positive and negative, you shouldn't say what you believe. You should say what people believe and both sides should be discussed if you have and conjunction. But if you have or, then in most cases, you have to say, you have to choose one of the two trends, either positive or negative. Okay. Now let's look at category two, which is called discussion essays. Well, discussion category is opposite to opinion category. Here you have to mention only people's views, not your own opinions. Okay. So you shouldn't say what you believe what you think, but you should say what people believe. Well, the questions are here. Discuss both views. As you see, there is no and give your opinion. There is no this kind of uh, requirement. And discuss both negative and positive developments, as you see, and. So that means some people believe it is negative, others think it is positive, and body part one is going to be negative paragraph, body part two is going to be positive paragraph. Uh, and you shouldn't make your choice because this is not opinion. And the other question in discussion category is what are the advantages and disadvantages? Again, if you go to and, then you should say body part one advantage paragraph, body part two disadvantage paragraph, as you see here. And again, in both body parts, body part one and body part two, you should say only what people believe. And in no part of the essay, introduction, body part, body part one, two, conclusion, in no part of the essay, you shouldn't say what you believe. So is this slide, slide clear to you? Yes, it's clear. Uh, Mr. Jehon, discussion both negative and positive development and what are the advantage and disadvantage are the same question. In most like cases. Yeah. Exactly. In most cases there. So, you know, it you know, just it might depend on the topic as well. I mean, advantage, disadvantage, positive or negative. So this is why I put both questions in this category. Okay. All right. And now let's look at uh, category three. Yeah, just a second. Okay. Well, category three says uh, this is something mix of discussion plus opinion, okay? Uh, discuss both views, as you say, this is discussion, what people believe, and give your opinion, this is what you believe, okay? So um, in this category, body parts are divided like that. Body part one, what people believe. Body part two, again, what people believe and in conclusion your choice okay discuss both views and give your opinion and mostly i mean giving your opinion you give your opinion in the conclusion the other question is do the advantage, advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So this is the second time we say advantage, disadvantage, but in category two, advantage, it was advantage and disadvantage, where you have to write both ideas in body part one and body part two, 
without giving your opinion in conclusion. But here, advantage outweigh disadvantage. I lose the candidate to make a choice. For instance, I'm a candidate, and this question is in my question paper. So for instance, I choose disadvantage outweigh advantage. Then advantage is going to be people's views. Disadvantage is going to be my ideas. Okay, so body part one is going to be advantage, what people believe. Body part two is going to be disadvantage, what I believe. And in conclusion, I have to summarize again my, my choice. Okay. Well, and category four. So category four is a bit different from other categories. So this is called problem and solution um, essay. So it might be cause and solution, or it might be cause and effect, or maybe um, the questions are going to be put as effects and solutions but they are different. I mean, so we are going to learn them uh, separately and uh, also they look similar, but they've got uh, loads of differences as well. Finally, category five. So <laughs> many candidates don't wish to, to see direct questions, but I always find it easy because direct questions don't challenge the candidate to make a decision if the if this type is opinion or discussion. Uh, here in category five direct questions, the candidate should answer the given question directly uh, as much as the candidate understands. Okay, that's it. And any random questions might be here. For instance, the topic is um, in many countries, uh, public transport. Uh, for instance, are uh, free of charge and the question is coming. So um, is it free or paid in your country? So this is a random question in your country and you have to answer this question um, uh, immediately, directly. Okay, well, uh, this is all about the types of essays. Have you got any questions? No, I haven't. Thanks. So, uh, category five: direct question and in a random question. Are we, uh, are we going to write an essay according to the questions? Exactly. Will First, it be if, only questions, and we have to answer that? Yeah. If you have one question, then you have to find two reasons. Okay. And one reason is going to be, I mean, one group of reasons is going to be one body part, and next reasons are going to be another uh, body okay, part. Okay, understood. But if you have two questions, two random questions. Then uh, the first random question is going to be body part one. The second random question is going to be body part two. Okay. All right, good. Now let's look at how to write a good introduction. Oh, uh, well. Well, how to organize an essay is of great importance because um, wrong paragraphing might affect the process of writing or it might affect the task achievement. The first, uh, so traditionally, candidates know that paragraphs are introduction, body part one, body part two, and conclusion. So minimum two body parts are necessary in writing, but uh, if you write body part three, uh, no one can say body part three is going to increase your score. No, the number of body parts doesn't affect the score. Even you can get a band nine with two body parts. But don't write one body part because it's 
it is it is not enough to uh, to reach 250 votes. Okay, so introduction. In the introduction, you have to follow two main steps. Do you have to do two main steps? Uh, the first step is paraphrasing the given topic, and the second step is uh, answering the given question. But you have to note that it is really uh, you you can paraphrase. I mean, step one, you can paraphrase the given topic by two methods by using synonyms or changing the grammatical structures okay or sometimes both of them are possible if you have good synonyms then you need to paraphrase as much as possible uh, if your grammar is strong then you can change the structures of the sentence for instance the, the basic method in changing the grammatical structure is changing active voice to the passive voice. Okay, well, so let's look at an example. So this is my topic and this is my question. Today, people are working from home online rather than going to workplaces. So this is a topic, some candidates uh, don't look at the question, they don't care about the question and immediately start writing the topic about the topic. But it's wrong because you have to answer the question. Both you are. Oh, I think that I did something wrong. Uh, goodness. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, is it positive? or negative okay so this is my question and i have to decide if this question is opinion or discussion by the way is it opinion or discussion do you remember it is a discussion it is opinion. No, so, sorry 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 it's opinion yes it's yeah, not because and. Th this yes. is not and this is and both. yes Okay, so it's positive or negative. Well, some um, IELTS examiners and experts say that, I mean, choosing one of two sides is the best method to answer this question, while others believe that it's also possible to write, I mean, to, to write about both sides, positive and negative, body part one, positive, body part two, po uh, negative. But again, saying that uh, some examiners uh believe that i mean choosing one and talking about it in both body parts and in conclusion to be clear so it's much better rather than talking about both sides whatever now the first action is to paraphrase the topic second action is to answer the question but while paraphrasing the topic we have to use synonyms and changing into a new different grammatical structure. Okay, so I've put my own sample, but this is not the best uh, way of paraphrasing and answering the question. You might have a better one. For instance, I'm saying that it is no secret that working online is becoming more popular or is becoming more common than working in the office. So I paraphrase the given topic. And now I'm answering the question. In my opinion, it has more advantages because this trend is more convenient and effective. So some candidates just say, in my opinion, it has more advantages without showing the reasons. But I personally like to, uh, okay, just a second. Yeah, I personally like to add my reasons in the introduction. Uh, and in my body part one, I will talk about convenience. In body part two, I'm going to talk about efficiency to show why I believe it has more advantages. Okay, so uh, for me, this is a better outline uh, 
for the examiner to predict my body parts. Okay, so why I have um, highlighted this part of the introduction? Because, uh, I mean, templates would help you to manage your time effectively. For instance, I usually start my introduction with these kinds of phrases. It is not secret, it is true, something else. Or when I answer the question to mention my opinion, I'm saying that in my opinion, it has more advantages or it has more disadvantages because this trend is, okay, so like this, by using these kinds of uh, fixed phrases, you can manage your time more effectively. Okay, now take your paper and pen and write your introduction for this topic and question. You can use my phrases here. It's no secret. Da, 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 da. In my opinion, it has more advantages or more disadvantages because this trend is. So you have five minutes to write an introduction. Five minutes later, I'm going to look at your mistakes and try to correct them and discuss them. Okay, here you go, you have five minutes. Do you have any questions? No, I don't.